News of anti-Semitic behavior is, unfortunately, becoming more and more prominent in the media lately. Certain celebrities have recently come under fire for anti-Semitic statements and social media posts, as well as local figures like the president of the Philadelphia NAACP. But why is it that only certain people caught using anti-Semitic language are being held accountable? Why is it that the president of the United States, who has been a constant ally to the Jewish people is censored almost daily. But people like Ilhan Omar and Louis Farrakhan are allowed to continue their rhetoric. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. Barry, thank you for joining me. Great to be back with you, Steph. Uh, Barry, my question is, uh, why hasn't this guy resigned yet? Like, why is there a debate and a question about it? Because unlike all the other prejudices in America, hatred of blacks, hatred of Hispanics, hatred of women, hatred of gays, hatred of anybody in the LGBT community, hatred of Jews is tolerated and gets you press and gets you following and gets you retweeted. So there's a certain cachet to being able to say horrible things about Jews and then to have a very minor walk back sort of apology like, you know, I was just taken out of context or I didn't realize that was offensive. Sorry. Yeah, I and mean, that worked. Barry, you are Jewish. And when you see people like this, celebrities, uh, elected officials make anti-Semitic remarks and they get away with it and they apologize, do you actually take their apology seriously? Absolutely unconditionally no and here's why you can have president clinton president obama jimmy carter on stage with the leading hater of jews oh by the way and whites and americans and capitalism louis farrakhan and that's okay as if they didn't know and then when you call them on it they say things like well i don't believe everything he says is bad that's like sort of saying well you know i know hitler killed a lot of jews but he did promise and deliver on full employment so in that case hitler wasn't such a bad guy you're not allowed to say that why because he's the biggest mass murderer in history and yet louis farrakhan can say oh hitler i'm compared with hitler well we all know he was a great man that is outrageous and has no place either in the media or being associated with anybody that's famous. Yeah, Farrakhan has said a lot of disturbing, racist, anti-Semitic uh, remarks. And, and it's amazing how many friends he has in Hollywood, how many friends he has that are lawmakers and they are never really, uh, they're kind of like afraid to condemn him. Like they don't want to. I don't know if it's their their closeness with him. Uh, but for some reason, they get a pass on that. But if anyone else uh, were to support somebody and, and the words that they've said, that would be an issue. So I don't understand why they get a pass too. Well, there's an ingrained underlying, very sad thing we have to call out. And I really appreciate this segment, Stephanie, which is the anti-Semitism that is so prevalent. Nobody doesn't know what Farrakhan stands for. Let me be very clear. So if you get a Snoop Dogg or an Ice Cube or this guy at the NAACP in Philadelphia saying these outrageous things, they ought to go away and learn better. The truth is the NAACP was founded by black activists and Jewish activists 100 years ago. And yet the history has been forgotten and the Jewish people have been left behind by the same black activists that they helped rise out of being victims of horrible racial prejudice 100 years ago. Barry, I'm sure you watched this hearing where the biggest tech CEOs of big tech went and did a virtual conference in front of lawmakers. Uh, there's a lot of conversation about censorship and, you know, shadow banning and all this and that. So if you're conservative, you get kicked off of Twitter pretty fast if you say something that the left doesn't like. 
But if you're Louis Farrakhan or some of the others, they can say some pretty horrific things on Twitter and their accounts remain. They still have a blue check mark and no one does anything. What do you think about the hypocrisy when it comes to big tech and who they censor? I'm so, I'm so glad you brought this up. The biggest threatener of mass murderer, mass murder in the world right now is uh, the supreme leader for life and dictator of Iran, Khomeini. He's been calling for the annihilation of all the Jews in the world on a constant basis. And just yesterday, Twitter came out and said, well, we're not going to censor that because that's political speech. By the way, that's insane. And yet, as you point out so uh, succinctly in the last few days, all the tech giants testified before Congress saying inane things like, well, we're just a platform we don't censor. Oh, my God, what a lie. Candidate after candidate and member of Congress after member of Congress made it very clear. My posts get taken down. I'm shadow banned. My, my friends disappear. My followers can't find me. My newsletters don't get delivered or they go into spam. It is obvious. It is patently obvious. Congress needs to step in and say, either you open the door and it's free speech or you shut down hate speech. But if you're just shutting down conservatives, that makes you a publisher. That makes you subject to regulation. And look out, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. The Congress is coming and they're mad and they're mad right now enough to do something about it. Well, hopefully so. Barry, we got to leave it here. Thank you.